Hey everyone, Pete here, and I've got something exciting for you today. Right here I have a brand new RTX 4060 non-TI variant graphics card, and we're going to attempt to put it into this Dell Optiplex 9020 MT, which in theory should work, because one of the great things about this card is its low power consumption, and this baby doesn't have a whole lot of power in it, so we're going to see how it goes. All we should need is the proper power adapter cables, and we should get it to work. Now, I know some of you are going to say, <laughs> you're crazy, and don't do it, and it's not going to work. But what kind of video would this be if we didn't try? So, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, now, first things first, we are going to unbox this guy and see what we got inside. Oh, we don't have any stickers. I'm just going to open it right up. And, ooh, it's looking pretty. Let's open it right up, untape it. Okay, all right. Oh, that's not very big. It's nice and small and compact. It should fit right in this Optiplex pretty well. Look at that. Looks good. We got the MSI GeForce RTX. We got the Ventus Black 2X Overclock Edition. That's what it looks like. Front back. Power. Now, because this card has an eight pin power requirement and we don't have any eight pin cables in the Optiplex itself, we had to get an adapter, a SATA to eight pin adapter. So that's what we got here. All right, here's what we're looking at. We have the SATA to eight pin adapter. Now let's take a look inside this Optiplex and see what we got, shall we? Open up the side panel. Here's what we are looking at. So right now we have a GTX 1650 in there as our graphics card. It's an i7-490 CPU. We've got a 256 gig SSD drive up there. We have a 500 gig hard drive right there, which means we got only one SATA power line left. All right, so what we're gonna have to do here Plug this guy in to right there. Success. Part one down. Next, we will be taking the GTX 1650 out so that we can put our new baby in. So, without further ado, it should just slide right out. Maybe it should slide right out. There we go. We got it. Aha! That's what we were working with, right there. And this is what we are working with right here. All right, so let's see if we can install this bad boy right in there. First, looks like we got a, uh, got a little cover we gotta slip off. There we go, get those pins exposed. And let's pop this bad boy in, shall we? All right expert graphics card installer right here ladies and gentlemen don't you even worry don't you even worry about it slide right in think we got it think we got it latch it right up oh clicks right in listen to that now we'll take our new eight pin adapter and you're gonna reach I think it'll reach. Let's see. Let's make sure I'm lined up the right way here. It's barely going to reach, but it'll reach. And voila! It's installed. Let's see if it'll turn on. All right, so the graphics card is in. Everything's plugged in back here. I got a display port that leads up to my 1440p monitor. A leap of faith, the big test. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Are we ready? Things happening? Are things, are things happy down there? What about up here? Are we gonna get something? Oh, we got something. We got something. Some sort of visual. Some sort of visual. A window symbol! Hallelujah! Alright, that's that's a good sign so far. Alright, so the card is in, it's installed, it's on. I updated the driver so that everything's up and running, and we are gonna benchmark Horizon Zero Dawn right here. 
We're at a 1440p, so 1440p monitor. Let's favor some quality. Let's go for it here. Let's go ultimate quality. We're going to go for it. Ultimate quality will apply that. And we're just going to jump right into the game and see how it actually looks. All right, so big things to keep an eye out for here are, of course, frames per second, uh, CPU utilization, which is almost at 100%, um, slight bottleneck as, as expected. Uh, GPU temperature continues to be on the rise. We're at 68. Uh, and the power, we're using uh, 102, 103 watts right now. But it looks good, and it looks smooth. Uh, I can't complain about that. And we'll run around a little bit and see how things look. Maybe find an enemy to shoot at. All right, so I've been roaming around for a bit. The GPU temperature stayed pretty steady. The wattage hasn't gone much over 105, which is the great thing about this card. It does not use a whole lot of wattage. Uh, the CPU is around 80, 90%. GPU 78. Frames per second are above 60. So everything's been honestly quite good. Now let's see if I can take these enemies out. All right, now I'm switching to DLSS just to see how that looks. Uh, real quick here. We still are on ultimate quality and 1440, of course. Upscale to quality. Let's see how this looks. All right, 72 frames, 74 frames. Still looks really smooth. Not much change in the other metrics. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is quite a good gaming experience, I must say. Now, if we turn upscaling off, let's see what that looks like. So this is just the raw GPU doing its thing. I mean, we're still getting 67 frames. Really quite good. This is uh, a huge leap up from the 1650 I had, for sure. All right, now we're trying out The Witcher 3 because it does support DLSS 3. So we're just going to check out the settings here real quick. We're going to go to video, check out the graphics. Uh, we are going to try Ultra with ray tracing. We're going to go right for it. And for our display, we're at 1440 unlimited frames. Let's give it a try. All right, so with ray tracing on with ultra settings, we are only at 26 frames. Not the best experience. DL DLSS is not on currently. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, honestly. Um, you can just tell it's not, you know, 60 frames plus, but it does not look terrible. All right, so we are gonna try DLSS here and we will, we'll just do a balanced approach and see how that looks. If we get any better performance out of it. Uh, we're looking at 31, slightly better, not a lot. Now let's try again with, let's turn ray tracing off and see what that does for us. Oh, that boosted big time. Now we're up to 50. Looking much better there without the ray tracing. To boost it even more, we can try DLSS performance. And see how that looks. There we go. Now we've got our 60 plus. Things are looking smooth and nice. Not too shabby at all. Beautiful sky. Looks really good. Not a bad experience really at all. All right, so now we're just on ultra settings, no ray tracing at all. Uh, DLSS balanced. And this seems like the proper settings for this card in this build. Um, I did cap frames to 60. Um, and this looks pretty good. This looks pretty smooth. We're getting close to 60. It does drop to 40 when you're running around a little bit, but then it gets right back up to 60 pretty quickly. Uh, so really pretty, pretty cool. Pretty awesome that this card and this build can support this. All right, next up, we're trying out Elden Ring. We're gonna start off in 1440 low and see how that goes for us. 
All right, so 1440 low, we're looking pretty good. You know, we're getting 50 frames. Um, temperatures are good. The CPU and GPU utilization are both pretty good. Um, can't really complain about this too much. Now, this game does have a 60 frames cap. Um, so you can't even go higher than 60 frames if you wanted to. So the fact we're kind of in between 30 and 60 is not bad. I mean, that's kind of expected. We'll give some higher resolution a shot in just a second here. All right, so now we're gonna max everything out and see how different it is. We'll turn ray tracing to max. We'll turn our quality to max. And we'll see what that does for us. All right, so we definitely take a hit in the frames. As you can see, we're just barely above 30. Doesn't look terrible, but it's definitely it's definitely not as smooth. Graphics look great, but you know, you, lo you lose those frames per second by doing this for sure. So yeah, I mean, this card can handle Elden Ring. Might just take some tweaking, you know, probably in between the low and the high settings is going to be the sweet spot. But um, other than that, this card works great for this game. So in conclusion, what do I think about what just happened? Well, first of all, it worked. That's what we were trying to do to make sure it worked, right? And it surely did. Now, again, the great thing is the low power consumption. All we needed was the SATA to 8 pin adapter to plug it in. And it was really pretty easy. It fit perfectly in the Optiplex. It didn't take long to update the drivers. We were gaming in, you know, 20 minutes or so. Really not that bad of a deal at all. And then once we were gaming, the results were pretty good. You know, we got some decent frames on some AAA games that are pretty needy of resources. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Witcher 3, Elden Ring. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be the best performance because you're going to be a little bit bottlenecked by that CPU. But, I mean, imagine this in a slightly better CPU. You're going to be off and running. Um, now, the price... Is it a budget card price? Not really, it could be It could be lower to make things better. This would be the perfect card if it was a little bit lower. Um, but for what it is, it's really pretty good for that kind of mid-level budget card. Would I recommend doing this build? I don't know. I'd be a little nervous about the power um, because it is only a 290 watt PSU in the Optiplex. You know, I'd probably wanna keep the side panel open, make sure that there's proper ventilation. Um, I'd want to shut it down. I wouldn't want to do long gaming periods with it just to be safe. Um, so I'd be, I'd be constantly worried about it. Um, I'd feel much better in like a Lenovo ThinkStation, for example, which is probably what I'm going to do next with this card. Other than that, it does work. So if you want to try it yourself, you surely can. You can see that it works here. Other than that, yeah, we did what we needed to do. Thank you all. Leave your comments down below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, y'all.